الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا قال الله تعالى عز وجل في القرآن الكريم بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن مثل عيسى عند الله كمثل آدم خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيكون اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه My respected brothers and sisters we give praise and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send darood and salutations upon Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam First off I would like to thank the jama'ah for inviting me to impart some of my some of my ilm alhamdulillah and we would like to thank all the brothers and sisters who are involved in something like this to make something like this happen to bring it to the reality is uh, is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all the efforts that is being rendered and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this from us insha'Allah to let this be a form of charity to let this be a form of success and give us the rewards on the day of judgment Amin. My respected brothers and sisters, my topic tonight, insha'Allah al-Azim, is Jesus Christ, His life and times. And before I even start talking about Jesus Christ, His life and times, the main reason tonight why we are mentioning Jesus Christ and not Isa ibn, Mar ibn Maryam, you will find throughout my lecture, insha'Allah, I will say Jesus Christ. And I will choose the translation over Isa ibn Maryam. Why? Because respected brothers and sisters, there might be people who are listening to this, whether on TV, whether elsewhere in the world, where inshallah they are not Muslims or they are not, they are not people of Iman. But inshallah by me speaking, by us speaking Jesus Christ, they will know the terminology, they will, they will know the terminology ex, explicit, explicitly means Jesus, the son of Mary. And if we continue, we say Isa ibn Maryam, they might think we are talking about some other prophet and they might not know who we are speaking about. But if we say Jesus Christ, everybody knows Jesus is son of Mary. Insha'Allah, my respected brothers and sisters, his lineage. Do we know, my respected brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the only woman name, the only female name that is mentioned in the Quran is Maryam. And not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned her by her name, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an entire surah and an entire chapter in the Quran of the mother of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, my respected brothers and sisters, come from a, such a noble family, whereby not only Allah mentioned his mother by her name and gave an entire chapter in the Quran by her name, Surah to Maryam. But she was raised by her uncle, which is Zachariah. And she as well had another sister, and she had a son, and the son's name was Yahya, or John the Baptist, as we say. And subhanAllah, her lineage goes up to Harun, alayhi salatu wasalam. And my respected brothers and sisters, Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus Christ came in such a family that not only his mother, or his grandmother, or his grandfather, or his uncle, or his granduncle, as we may say. But all right, if you look up, you only see prophets and prophets and prophets, and the pious woman, which is Maryam, alayhi salatu wasalam. Only the best of lineage, pious people. Which brings us up towards his miraculous birth. Subhanallah. The mother of Mary says, that I give an oath that whatever I have in my womb, I will give towards the monastery and the church. I will give towards the monastery and the prayer place, whatever I have in my womb. So when she gave the birth to Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam, Mary, she already gave the oath, but she wanted a son. 
But lo and behold, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the child to come out to be a female and her name is Mary. So she already gave the oath that I will give this, whatever is being born from this, from this fetus, towards the prayer place. So she gave it anyways. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَرْيَمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Mary had a place of prayer inside a place of prayer. She had her own corner. And she had a place of worship where nobody else could have gone except the one who would visit her and who would take care of her and who was her tutor. And her tutor was Zachariah alayhi salatu wasalam. And the miracles upon miracles used to be bestowed upon Mary. That he says when he go and he would see her, and he would go and he would teach her, and he would enter her chamber with her permission, he would see fruits therein. And he would ask Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam, from where did you get these fruits? That it is out of season. And she says this is from the risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to feed her and give her miraculously fruits which, is out of, which, which are out of season. Subhanallah. So one day my respected brothers and sisters, Maryam alayha salatu was salam was caring about her daily activities. And she was praying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam in the most noble of fashion and a striking handsome young man. He appeared before her and immediately my respected brothers and sisters, she made a dua towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Immediately she made a dua towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she says, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from this man in front of me. And she tells Jibra'il alayhi salatu wa salam. She says, Oh Jibra'il, but she didn't know his name. But she says, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I seek refuge in you from this man. And beware, stay away from me if you are pure and if you are pious. And then Jibra'il announced himself and he says, Inni Rasulum min Allah. He says, I am a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jibrail says, I am a messenger from Allah, and verily I came to you with good news. And verily I'm, going to, I'm telling you now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent me to tell you that you will bear a son and his name will be Isa ibn Maryam. Immediately in Quran, and every single thing about the story of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, except a few, my respected brothers and sisters, are from the Quran. Every single thing except a few are from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَخَذَتْ مِن دُونِهِمْ حِجَابًا فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا مِن رُوحَنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We send upon her our angel Jibra'il. So immediately she, she says, قالت إني أعوذ بالرحمن منك إن كنت تقيا. She says, I seek refuge in the Most Merciful if you are pure and if you fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Jibrail recited to her, and Jibrail says, and all of it is mentioned in the Quran. Jibrail says, قال إنما أنا أنا رسول ربك لأهب إليك غلام زكيا. He says, I am a messenger from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. To tell you that you will get a child who is pure and he will be very knowledgeable. Immediately she says, and she was pure and she had no husband. She was pure and she was never married. She was so pure that no man have ever touched her before. And immediately she says, Allah says, How can I bear a son? وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي بَشَرْ Where no man has ever touched me before. وَلَمْ أَكُوْ بَغِيَّا Nor am I unchaste. قَالَ كَذَلِكْ Jibra'il alayhi salatu wasalam said, It is like that. قَالَ كَذَلِكْ قَالَ رَبُّكِ هُوَ عَلَيَّ هَيٌّ هُوَ عَلَيَّ هَيٌّ وَلِنَجْعَلَهُ آيَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَرَحْمَةً مِنَّا وَكَانَ أَمْرًا مَقْضِيَّا When she was there and visualize with me my respected brothers and sisters born in the family and in the lineage of prophethood 
of Zachariah, of Harun, of Yahya, all the way up to Abraham. And she was so pure that her mother gave her over towards the monastery. And worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the monastery, appearing before her a man of striking, of striking beauty, very handsome, reciting to her words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is a messenger from Allah and telling her a good news that she will get a son. Immediately she says, I seek refuge in Allah from you if you are pious and pure. You are going to get a son and his name will be Isa ibn Maryam. How can I get a son when no man has ever touched me before? Neither I am unchaste. And Jibra'il says, kazalik. It is the order from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me to tell you that you will get a son and you will get a son. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him a sign, an ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him a sign to everyone. And according to the ulama, I hear it from more than one ulama, that when she was there and she saw Jibra'il, and Jibrail told her that she will get a son. Immediately, Jibrail blew the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into her sleeve and she was conceived. And what is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants anything to create, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants anything to happen in this dunya or in the akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just says, Be and behold, it is kun fayakun, kafanun. Kun fayakun, be and behold it is. So Jibrail blew the word wa kalimatahu alqaha ila Maryam wa ruhum min. And Jibrail blew the word of Allah subhanahu wa taala into her sleeve, and she was con she was conceived. Subhanallah. Now we want to clear up something here. That Allah subhanahu wa taala is the one who miraculously made her pregnant by his word which is be and behold it is and not by the physical speaking of the word but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is the one who makes anything happen because there are people who are saying Jesus Christ is the word of Allah he was created by miraculously by the word of Allah which is kun fayakun be and behold it is but he is not and we should understand this because there are people who are saying, you know, he is the word of Allah. وَكَلِمَتُهُ alqaha, The word of Allah which is be and behold it is, was blown into her and she was conceived. And I hope I cleared it up insha'Allah. So my respected brothers and sisters, when she was continuing to asking Jibra'il about this, Jibra'il stopped her and Jibra'il says that you know what? وَكَانَ أَمْرًا مَقْضِيَّ It has already been ordered and you are already pregnant and conceived with Isa ibn Maryam. And the ulama says not only conceived but nine months conceived at the same time miraculously. So my respected brothers and sisters, the next point is his miraculous birth. And it's all mentioned in the Quran. My time is going. The Quran makes mention that when he was about to born and she was about to make delivery of Isa والسلام, she fetched him and she retired, she retired to him to a remote place where nobody can see her. And like any woman when they are about to give birth, the pangs of delivering the baby is so severe that they cannot bear the pain. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says she went towards a date palm tree and she held on to the date palm, date palm tree and she was going through this excruciating pain. And then she made a statement. And she says, woe upon me, because of the pain that I am going through, mittu qabla haza, I wish I was dead before this time. Wa kuntu mansan, wa kuntu nasyan mansiya. And I wish, I wish I was dead before getting this pain, and I wish I was something forgotten. Dead and something forgotten, because of the pain she's going through. Subhanallah. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to her. فَنَادَاهَا مِن تَحْدِهَا أَلَّا تَحْزَنِي قَدْ جَعَلَ رَبُّكِ تَحْتَكِ سَرِيَّا And it's all mentioned in Quran in Surah Maryam. If you recite Surah Maryam, you will know the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ. And immediately as, as long as she made as immediately as she made the statement and she held on to the tree she heard a voice from beneath her and there are two opinions of who this boy this voice is coming from but we will mention one tonight not to confuse us it is stated that Jesus Christ spoke to her from beneath her and he says Vanadaha min tahtiha a caller call out from beneath her don't be sad. You are going through pain. It is now over. Look beneath you and you will see a spring of fresh water that you can drink from. And shake the date palm tree. Fresh dates will fall upon you. Subhanallah. And many a time we see that when our wives and mothers give birth, one of the things that is lacking in the breast milk is iron. And miraculously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, one of the best things you could give a pregnant woman is dates to eat. Subhanallah, it has so much of minerals and vitamins in it, and iron in it that it gives the pregnant woman strength to deliver the baby. And after that, it gives the pregnant woman, or it gives the, the, the mother, such nutritious milk to give off subhanallah the colostrum and all those things that are in the, the breast milk for the first drink dates add to the nutrition so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says shake the date palm tree and dates will fall upon you immediately something to drink and something to eat subhanallah eat and drink as much as you like as much as you, you know, satisfy yourself with the eating and the drinking now Isa والسلام, was born. No father. She coming from the family of prophets. Go towards this remote place for childbirth. Now what is going to happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, listen, when you go back to your people, tell them that you have, to take, you have taken an oath, that you are fasting and you would not speak to anyone. I am fasting towards the most merciful. And I wouldn't speak to anyone. And when anybody speak to you regarding towards the child, where it is from, who is his father, how did you give birth to it, you came, you came from a family of, of prophethood, tell them that you are fasting towards Allah and you would not speak but point towards the baby. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that she's walking back towards her family and towards her people and calmly, composed, happy a smile on her face the greatest miracle ever to happen in mankind at that time from the beginning of mankind a birth of a child without a father and he's a prophet declared before he's even born calmly compose smile on her face going back towards our family and her people the people surrounded her. Qalu ya Maryamu. They said, Oh Maryam. Oh Mary, surely an amazing thing has thou brought. Subhanallah. Where is the father? Where is the father? Ya ukhta Harun. And she was mentioned by the sister of Harun. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Ma kana abu ki mura'ata saw'in wa ma kana wa ma ku wa ma kanat ummu ki baghiya your mother and father were not you know they were not bad people neither your mother was an unchaste woman that where is the father where is the father of this son and then she says fa asharat ilai she pointed towards the baby and immediately they say like anybody would say 
كيف نكلم ما كان في المهد صبيا how can we speak to someone in a cradle how can we speak to someone in a cradle now my respected brothers and sisters one of the most enlightening enlightening thing that i found in researching about the story of isa alayhi salatu wasalam is how many things is mentioned in the quran about him and what the christians are saying and what we are saying what really happened and what the christians are saying subhanallah you would find my respected brothers and sisters that islam has so many things mentioned about isa and his mother that not only she is mentioned by name in the quran and not only she is the only woman to be mentioned and a chapter made by her by her name that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Isa ibn Maryam over 26 times in the Quran or 26 times in the Quran and Imd Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma says before I get to the miraculous speech of Isa in the cradle تَكَلَّمُ عَرْبَعَةُ سِغَارَ that four babies spoke in the cradle and this is a sideline he says four babies spoke in the cradle do we know them? do we know who are they? You know, subhanAllah, not to, not to get derailed. You know, we, we know the, the cricket team or the soccer team. And we even know those who are not playing in the team, but they are there. And we know from the prime minister come right down, all due respect to them. But we don't even know our deen. How many babies spoke in their cradle? We don't even know. What does Islam say about Jesus, the son of Mary? We don't even know. Maybe it's time we, look, we take, maybe it's time we take time to, to learn our deen and educate our deen. And we hope by the programs like these and other speakers like me and other halaqat, other assemblies that you get of deen in the masjid, that you come out to the program. And you come out, not only you come out to listen and enjoy, and not only you come out because you want to be entertained, but you come out with books and pens as well. Because the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be taught, learned, practiced, implemented, and then teach others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of people that when we hear things, we put them in our lives. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of people, my respected brothers and sisters, that after listening, implementation, that we teach others as well because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Balligu anni walau aya. Speak about me if it's one verse Speak about me if it's one verse Convey the deen if it is one ayah So Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah says Of the four babies who spoke in the cradle one was Isa ibn Maryam Wa sahibu Juraij Wa shahidu Yusuf Wa ibn to Mashita ibn to Fir'aun Number one Was Jesus the son of Mary Number two was Sahibu Juraj. I cannot get into the, the details as right now, as of right now. Number three was a witness of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. When he was, when he was, uh, when they said that he committed, uh, when, he, when they said that Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam wanted to commit fahisha or adultery or fornication with the king's wife, a young lad from amongst them says, who wasn't speaking that if his shirt if his kameez is tear from in front then he's a liar and the king's wife is speaking the truth but if his shirt is torn from behind if his shirt is torn from behind then he's speaking the truth and the king's wife is a liar and his shirt was torn from behind because he ran away from her and the last of them is the daughter of the hairdresser of the daughter of Fir'aun and the story is all mentioned in Quran and Hadith when, you know, I, I, I don't want to get into the details, but basically Fir'aun dig a pit of fire and told them to jump inside. And after he threw her babies into the fire, she had one more baby with her. And the baby spoke to her and says, jump, jump because Jannah is awaiting us. And the first of them was Isa ibn Maryam. May Allah better understanding of the deen. I mean. So my respected brothers and sisters, what did Isa says? When his mother says that I won't speak today, speak to the child. Isa ibn Maryam, my respected brothers and sisters, what was his first words? 
What are they saying about Isa ibn Maryam and what is his first words? And I want you to come with me about the amount of things he said. Not he spoke one word or one letter or some phrases, but listen to the amount of things he mentioned. When they questioned him in his cradle, first day old, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Surah to Maryam, when they questioned her about her baby, who is the father, and you are not from a family of people who commit wrong, what did Jesus say miraculously at his birth? Number one, he says, Allah inni Abdullah. I am the servant of Allah. I am the slave of Allah. Atani al kitab wa jalani nabiya. Allah subhanahu wa taala has given me the book, and Allah subhanahu wa taala has made me a nabi. Wa jalani mubarakan aina ma kuntu. And Allah subhanahu wa taala has made me blessed wherever I am, and wherever I go. وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ هَيَّا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made me perfection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told me to, to rectify my salah and my zakah wherever I go and as long as I am, as long as I am alive. وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me kind towards my mother. وَلَمْ يَجْعَلَنِي جَبَارًا شَقِيًّا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made me overbearing or miserable. وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ And peace be upon me. The day I born, وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ And the day I will die, وَيَوْمَ أُبْعَثُ هَيَّا And the day I will be resurrected. Now I don't know if you have been counting, but not only he spoke one thing, but those, in those ayahs, he spoke nine different things. In the ayahs that I recited before you, he spoke nine different things. Number one, he says, I'm the servant of Allah. Number two, he says, Allah has given me the book and he has made me a prophet. Number three, my respected brothers and sisters, he has made me a prophet. Number four, mubarakan aina ma kuntu, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me blessed wherever I am. Number five, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told me to perfect my salah and my zakah. Since I am alive, number six, wabarram biwalidati, number seven, and be kind to my towards my mother. Walam yajalani jabana shakiya, and Allah subhanahu wa taala didn't make me overbearing nor miserable. And number nine, wassalamu alayya, peace be upon me. The day I born, the day I die, and the day I will be resurrected before Allah subhanahu wa taala. Imagine that, spellbound, eyes open. The miracle before them, Jesus spoke in the cradle. So what did they do? What did they do? So I gave a khutbah before, two weeks ago, about the miracles of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's very amazing that Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, mentioned in Dala'il al Nubuwa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted the Prophet sallallahu over 1,200 different miracles. And I concluded my first khutbah with this, my respected brothers and sisters. And it is important that I mention this before you. Because what come after, what I'm about to explain to you, you will understand better with what comes after, with what they tell Jesus and what they, tell his, what they told his mother. When the miracles was given by the prophets and the miracles was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the prophets. Number one, what is the miracle? Number two, who were miracles given to and why? And number three, who were the recipients of the miracles? Number one, miracles from the word mu'jiza, ajaza, which means weak translation. The word ajaza, mu'jiza means weak, means a miracle is too weak for, for anybody else to perform. And only a Nabi can perform a miracle. Number two, my respected brothers and sisters, who it was given to, it was given to the prophets. Why it was given to the prophets? So that they would prove their prophethood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them to mankind to come upon Tawheed, that they are a prophet from Allah and to believe in Allah. 
Now who are the recipients, recipients of the miracles? And I mentioned in my khutbah that there are three people, three types of people. Number one, someone who already believed. And when we hear the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the prophets, this would increase our iman. And we would even love the prophets more. The second category of people, my respected brothers and sister, sisters, is a person with a pure and a sincere heart. That when they, hear, when they hear the miracles of the prophets, if their heart are pure and they are searching for the truth, they would believe in the prophet and they would accept Islam. But the third category of people, my respected brothers and sisters, are such a people that would not believe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, makes mention of them more than one, two, even three times in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if we raise these people up to the skies and open for them a window from the skies and carry them in the heaven, and even if we make the dead speak to them or tell them that there is life after death, they would never believe in nothing that the prophets do. And there are people like that, my respected brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't make us of such a people. Amen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they will continue to question and question and question until, the, until you know what the question is going to come. We want to see Allah. Oh Muhammad, we would never believe in you unless you split the ground and you make a river flow. We would never believe in you until you make a palace appear for us in the skies. And we, you know what? Let us see Allah. But you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about such a people, my respected brothers and sisters? It is as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a barrier and a seal over their eyes and over their ears and over their hearts. Come what may, they would not believe. They chose to never believe in nothing. You know, they have some people like that. No matter how much you explain and tell them, but boy, this is white. This is white. This is what the color, color white looks like. They would never believe in you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Summum bukmun umyun fahum la yakinun. Deaf, dumb, and blind, they would never believe. So Isa alayhi salatu wasalam spoke in the cradle. And Isa alayhi salatu wasalam said that I am a servant of Allah and I'm the slave from Allah. And the ayat continue, nine, continues nine things he spoke and nine things he said. So the people that were there and Isa والسلام, was sent to the Jews. Who Isa was sent to? To the Jews. And the people that were there, what did they do? What did they do? And every prophet were tested by such a people. They started to think about the future. If this is a child speaking in his cradle and he is a servant of Allah and a prophet and Allah makes him blessed wherever he go and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't make him miserable nor overbearing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoined salah and zakah upon him and kind towards his parents which is Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam you know what he is going to take the fame from us and he's going to take the spotlight and he will take the mic. And fame will, fame will eventually go towards him and he will take it away from us. And he will pull the carpet from beneath our feet. So you know what? From day one, let's deny him. And let's disbelieve in him. So they said, listen, Mariam, where is the father? Mary, where is the father? You have brought before us a child and you know what you know what they continue to say you have brought before us a child where is the father and they disbelieve in him from day one now my respected brothers and sisters that's a type of kufr that we have to be very careful with kufr in kari that people who choose not to believe no matter what you see you have to be careful of such a people because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says deaf dumb and blind they will never believe and you have to be careful they pull you away from tawheed now what was the message of Isa and the Jesus, the son of Mary? As he grew up, as he grew up, my respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ذَلِكَ عِيسَى بُنُ مَرْيَمْ قَوْلَ الْحَقِّ الَّذِي فِيهِ يَمْتَرُونَ 
this is the like of Isa ibn Maryam. And before I continue with his, with when he grew up, I have little, little more than 20 minutes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sealed before us the probabilities of bringing someone in this dunya. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna masala Isa Allahi ka masali Adam. The like of Isa is the like of Adam. خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him from dirt and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said be the word be kun kun fayakun be and behold it is number one how can a human being come into existence in this world one is the creation of Adam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fashioned Adam with his own hands and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered this soul to blow into Adam Without a male, without a female, miraculously. And he was the first man. Second probability, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my respected brothers and sisters, took from the rib of Adam, not even from him, not even from him like how me and you are born, but from the rib. So you cannot say he's the father because part of him was taken out. From the rib of Adam and Allah make Hawa or Eve. Without a mother, without a father. And from the rib of Adam, he created a woman. So that's two probabilities. The third probability, my respected brothers and sisters, is the like of Isa, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Isa with a mother, from a mother, but without a father. And the fourth probability, to close the circle of, of how anyone can come into this dunya, is how me and you are born. With the halal relationship of a man and a woman, a man and a wife, with the constitution of nikah, with the rights of nikah. Subhanallah. My respected brothers and sisters, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam grew up. And wherever he go, wherever he go, he is blessed. And of the miracles of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, that is that wherever he go, he would speak to the people, subhanallah. He would speak to the people and he would tell them about what they eat. He would tell them of what they eat and what they cook in their homes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says of the miracles of Isa alayhi salatu is that he would heal the blind. Now every Nabi that came into this dunya, my respected brothers and sisters, they were given miracles of the people of the time. So Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he was given miracles of the people of his time, like the people of his time because the people of his time was blessed with medicine was a climax of the medical age in his time so what people used to do is when people would get sick they would call the best doctors and those doctors used to heal them by the permission of Allah but what they used to do is they used to feel pride in their hearts because this doctor healed him with medicine and they would boast about this so what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Isa the miracles to what to be better than them that listen, a man is blind, Isa salam, go and he put his hands over the man's eye, make the water towards Allah and miraculously he could have seen. A child who was born and a man, a grown man who had never seen since he was born, Isa salam, just used to go put his hand, read towards Allah and he would see. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he will cure the blind and what he would do he will cure leprosy and what he would do he would even bring back the dead back to life because when someone died nobody can bring them back to life except Allah so he would go towards the dead man and he would supplicate towards Allah and the man would wake up and he would come back to life before the very eyes so my respected brothers and sisters people used to look at this and as he grew up my respected brothers and sisters people would gravitate towards him and people were starting to accept his deen brings us to the next message brings us to the next topic what was the message of Isa what was the message of Jesus Christ and what were the message of all the prophets that come to mankind does anybody know what was the message of Jesus what was the message of Muhammad what was the message of Abraham Moses Noah Lot Job Yahya, John the Baptist, Adam, and every one of the messengers of Allah. Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'buduhu hadha siratum mustaqim. 
Verily Allah is my Lord. And verily Allah is your Lord. So worship Him. Fa'buduhu. Worship Him. Hadha siratum mustaqim. This is the straight path. And the message of Tawheed was all the messengers came with that message. All the messengers came with that message. Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'buduhu. Hadha siratum mustaqim. Verily Allah is my Lord and your Lord. Then worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the straight path. My respected brothers and sisters, in Islam, we do not need no one. In Islam, we do not need no one to go through to, to get towards Allah. We follow the prophets because we were told to follow them. Whatever the messengers give, whatever the messenger give you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam give you, take it. And whatever he tells you to stay away from, then stay away from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibra'il to taught him the deen and we learn the deen through him. But who do we worship? We don't worship Muhammad, we don't worship Jesus Christ, we don't worship Adam, we don't worship Noah, we worship no individual in this dunya. Who do we worship? I worship the one who made me. I worship my maker. To whom has the deity? There is no deity except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So because Allah is the one who made me, I worship him and him who alone. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu kufun ahad. Say he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one. Say he is Allah, the one. Allahu samad. Allah is self-sufficient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghani and he is rich and independent. Lam yalid. You know, subhanAllah, the reason why I bring Surah to Ikhlas into the picture is because when people came and they saw Jesus Christ and they didn't see no father, a rumor went about, and even the Christians have this up to now, that he is the son of God, na'udhu billah. How can he be the son of God? It is not befitting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have a child. Lam yalid, walam yulad, walam yakullahu kufuan ahad. It is not befitting for Allah. Lam yalid, he didn't born, neither did he beget. Walam yakun lahu, and there is no one equal kufuan ahad. There is no equivalence with Allah. Allah is one and Allah is alone. So, so, so this is another thing that we clear up. Jesus is not a son of God. He is a messenger. And before I close, I will give you there is a conversation between Allah and Jesus Christ on the day of judgment for everyone to hear. So my respected brothers and sisters, the time is going. I have a little over 10 minutes. So inshallah, we will summarize the remaining balance of the talk inshallah. Some of the stories of Isa ibn Maryam, my respected brothers and sisters. Before we close inshallah, we want to give you at least two stories of Isa ibn Maryam, of Jesus, the son of Mary. His ascension towards the heavens, who was really crucified on the cross. His return and his purpose of his return. And the conversation between Allah and Jesus Christ on the day of judgment. Of one of the authentic stories of Jesus Christ, my respected brothers and sisters, is that he had his disciples. Does anybody know what was the amount of people who believe in Isa and how much was his disciples? Does anybody know? According to one narration, there were 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, his companions. And another narration says there are 17 disciples of Jesus Christ. So anywhere between 12 and 17 were the disciples of Jesus Christ. And one day he was walking with them. And he had some men with him as well. And he sent one of the men into the city to buy bread to bring it back to them. Because they were hungry. Subhanallah. And Jesus Christ and his mother eat. And if you eat, you have to drink. And if you eat and drink, then you must use the washroom. And if you eat and you drink and you use the washroom, you must die. They are not angels, but he is a prophet and his mother is pure. And they are not to be worshipped, but they are men. They are of this dunya. So he sent this man in the city to buy bread to bring back to them. And he bought three bread. And he ate one of them, and he says, two is enough for us. <clears throat> when he came back to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ asked him, what is the, where is the third bread? This might be more appealing towards the youth. So the man said, there is no third bread, that this is all I got from the money you give me. 
So they were successful in hunting the deer. They killed the deer. They slaughtered the deer. They roasted the deer and they ate from the deer. After they ate from the deer, what remained of the deer, Isa and Jesus Christ supplicated towards Allah. And he made dua towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and miraculously in front of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put meat and flesh, the remaining meat, flesh and bones back to the deer. And it came back to life miraculously in front of them and it ran away. And this was a miracle that was bestowed upon Isa. And he turned towards the man and he says, by the one who made this happen, by Allah, who ate the third loaf of bread? And he said, no one. And he said, no one. So they continued. They reached a river. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam hold the hands of his companions. He supplicate towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And miraculously, they walk on water over the river. Turn towards the individual and ask him, by the one, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who made this happen, who ate the third bread? And he said, no one. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, they went further and he made three heaps of sand or three heaps of dirt on the ground. He supplicated towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he told Allah, Oh Allah, turn these three heaps of gold, turn these three heaps of sand into gold. And miraculously, there were three heaps of gold in front of them. And Isa alayhi called the man and he says, Listen, this one is for me. This one is for you. But you see this third heap of gold? This is for the one who ate the third loaf of bread. And immediately the man said, I ate the third loaf of bread. When you see gold, you get weak, right? You get real weak when you see gold. So Isa and Jesus Christ said, listen, this is where we depart. We are continuing. You have to stay right here. You cannot follow us again. And he said, take all three of them. When they departed and they left him with his three heaps of gold, he don't even know what to do with it. And he was there and he's looking at the three heaps of gold. Some men pass his way, three robbers, three thieves, pass his way. And when they saw he had three heaps of gold, immediately they killed him. And they said, listen, now we got three heaps of gold, it's three of us. One for everyone. Listen, take some money, go into town, bring back some food, we are hungry. While the individual, while one of the thieves was in the town bringing back food, the two conspire against him. And he says, listen, when he come back, we're going to kill him. We're going to sort him out. So three heaps of gold, two of us, the bigger this year. He in the town conspired in his mind against his two thieves, against his two brethren, his two compadre. He says, listen, I'm going to poison this food and I'm going to give them to eat. So when they eat the food, they're going to die, and I'm going to get three heaps of gold. As soon as he come back, comes back with the food, they came and they killed him, and two of them, they had the three heaps of gold. Before they left with the three heaps of gold, they ate the food, it was poisoned, and they all lay on the ground dead. They all lay on the ground dead. Four men, three heaps of gold. Isa wasalam, and his companions and his disciples, they passed the same direction. And Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, saw the three heaps of gold. And he saw the men lying on the ground dead. And he says, this is the dunya. This is the dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, my respected brothers and sisters. اِعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ وَتَكَاثُرٌ You know, this dunya is just mere play. Wallahu, and this dunya is just amusement. And this dunya, it is competing with one another in gathering wealth and in making children. But the life of this dunya is only life and is only goods of deception. Do not follow the dunya, my respected brothers and sisters. Be wise, be wiser than that. Be wise, my respected brothers and sisters. Do not build something in this dunya like I mentioned in my khutbah yesterday. Do not build something in this dunya that when you are about to die, you don't want to leave it. 
And do not spend your time behind the dunya and take up all your time behind the dunya to build something temporary that you have to leave it when you die. But spend your time behind the akhirah and build a palace for yourself in the akhirah that when you leave this dunya, you have a palace to go to in the next life. And how sad it is that we build such palaces in this dunya and it is temporary when we have no palace in the akhirah, when we have to spend our permanent life there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of people, my respected brothers and sisters, that we make our palaces in Jannah. We make our houses in Jannah, decorated for us, and we strive in this dunya. Know and understand, the greater the struggle in this dunya, the greater the rewards in the akhirah. My respected brothers and sisters, the companions of Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, they went towards Isa. And they said, Qala Isa ibn Maryam, Allahumma Rabbana, Allahumma Rabbana, alay, anzil alayna ma'inatan minas sama, iz qala al-hawariyuna ya Isa ibn Maryam, hal yastati'u rabbaka, rabbuka ayyu nazzil alayna ma'inatan minas sama. Not only Surah Maryam was made in the Quran from the lineage of of Jesus, which is the mother. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make another mention of the Quran, another chapter which is Ali Imran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes another name of the Quran of the chapter in the Quran which is Al Ma'idah. And Al Ma'idah was sent to the to the disciples of Jesus, him and his people. So one day they came to Jesus Christ and they said, Is qala al Hawariyuna ya Isa ibn Maryam, O Jesus Christ, son of Mary. هل يستطيع ربك أن ينزل علينا ماء من السماء؟ Can your Lord send down for us a table spread from the skies? You order us to fast for an entire month, and we fasted. What happened? Jesus Christ went to his people and he said, "Let us fast for a month," and they fasted for the month. At the end of the month, they came to Isa and they says. Can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send down a table spread from the skies laden with food? Immediately, Isa alayhi salatu wa salam says, Qalat taqullaha in kuntum mu'mineen. Fear Allah. Fear Allah. Are you going to ask Allah for that? And they said, No, listen. We believe in you. We believe in the message. We believe in Allah. But we fasted for one month. So now we want an Eid. قَالُوا نُرِيرُ أَن نَّأْكُلَ مِنْهَا وَنَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُنَا وَنَعْلَمَ أَن قَدْ صَدَقْتَنَا وَنَكُونَ عَلَيْهَا وَنَكُونَ عَلَيْهَا مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ Listen Jesus Christ What we want to do is what we want to eat from it And we want to feel contented in our hearts And we want to know in our hearts أَن قَدْ صَدَقْتَنَا That you believed in us And that we are true تَكُونُ and we will be a witness from it. We will be a witness about it. Subhanallah. And it will be a aid from us. It will be a aid for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention in Surah Maryam. Qala Isa ibn Maryam Allahumma Rabbana. Isa the son of Mary says, O Allah, Rabbana, O our Lord, Anzil alayna ma'idatan minas sama. O oh Allah, send down a table spread from the sky, from the skies laden for us. It will be a day of festival for us and for those who come after us. And it will be a sign from you. And sustain us, you are the best of sustainers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied, and listen to the reply of Allah. قَالَ اللَّهُ إِنِّي مُنَزِّلُهَا عَلَيْكُمْ Allah says, listen, I will send down it for you. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بَعْدُ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنِّي يُعَذِّبُهُ But those who believe after this today, عَذَابًا لَا أُعَذِّبُهُ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ I will place a punishment upon them, such a punishment that no other person had ever got such a punishment before. So my respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the table spread from the skies. And it's mentioned in the hadith that thousands of people ate from the food. 
his disciples and thousands of people ate from the food and the food didn't even diminish from the tablespoon that they had and this was one of the greatest miracles that happened to them my respected brothers and sisters before I close I wrap this up inshallah with three things as Isa alayhi salatu wasalam grew and they saw the miracles one after the other curing the blind by Allah Isa alayhi salatu wasalam would make a board out of clay make the water towards Allah blow 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 in the board and the blood would fly the board would fly away he would heal the sick he would wake the dead up from death by the permission of Allah he got a table spread from the skies so what happened is that the Jews that were amongst them that were seeing this that didn't believe in him from day one when they saw that people start to gravitate to Isa alayhi salatu wasalam what they did that they didn't what what happened that they didn't like it so they conspired against him and they conspired to kill him so they went to the king of the time and they went to the king and they said listen O king amongst us is Jesus the son of Mary and he wants your throne Bismillah and he wants your throne and he wants to take you take you he wants to take over you you know he wants to uh, what we say he wants to take over the throne so without a hesitation without even investigating investigating is it as if it is true the king sent his men to collect Isa and to sort him out and to kill him so what they did is they the king's men came to Isa and when Isa والسلام, saw them coming there are two narrations that's mentioned about this we will mention one tonight inshallah and if you want you can read up about this he ran into the house and the place that he used to keep the meetings and the place that they were there where he was you know where he, where he had his disciples and there is one man from amongst them one of his disciples his name is Judas and the king's men are coming looking for, for Isa to kill him and Judas went out to them and they said that we are looking for Jesus where is he I said he's inside if you want I can go bring him for you so he he let the cat out, out of the bag he was a traitor he be a betrayer you know back where I'm from if somebody betrays we call him Judas I don't know if you do that here right so he was a betrayer so what he did is that he says Jesus is inside I'll go and bring him out for you so he betrayed Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, so he went in before he came in Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, know that this is about time and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention in the Quran they did not kill him neither did they crucify him but but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the window in the roof and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up towards him in the heavens so what happened and my respected brothers and sisters in Isra and Mi'raj we do the different stages in the heaven not Jannah par not, not paradise not Jannah but in the Samawat in the first heaven who is there Adam in the second heaven who is there Jesus peace be upon him that's where he is right now in the second heaven and he will come back and we will get to that just now I have less than 10 minutes so my respected brothers and sisters he's been, he's risen up towards Allah we didn't, they did not kill him they did not kill him neither did they crucify him but we raised him up to us so when Judas came in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the resemblance of Isa Jesus Christ come upon the face of Judas and he resembled Jesus he resembled this Jesus this is what our Quran and our Prophet told us this is the Islamic version of what they are telling you so he came and there's no Jesus and he went out back Judas rushed out back we can't fight him when he rushed out back with Allah placing the resemblance of Isa on Judas the resemblance of Jesus on Judas when he came out back immediately the king's men grabbed him he says why are you grabbing me for why are you grabbing me for I'm not Jesus I'm not seeing him inside they went inside they can't find him but what they know that this man resembled Jesus but what they know that this man resembled Jesus so what they did is that they didn't take his word for it 
on the cross, before the cross, when they grab him, every time, I'm not Jesus, I'm not Jesus, where is he? Wrong. Going to the room, they are not finding him, but the resemblance is on him. So he said, listen, you resemble Jesus, the king ordered us to kill you, we are going to kill you. The king ordered us to crucify you, we are going to crucify you. They made him fetch a cross. One narration said they made him a thorny crown and put the crown on his head. They nailed him to the cross and they crucified him in a painful manner. And Jesus was crucified on the cross. Subhanallah. Now my respected brothers and sisters, that clears up another thing. The return of Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam. I have one more thing after this. Please bear with me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of his return. Which sharia will he follow? Because in the lifetime of Jesus Christ, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him the Torah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him another book, the Injil, which is the Bible. So he was given the Torah, he knew the Torah by heart and he was also given another, another scripture, which is the Injil. Subhanallah. So not only he was given the Injil, but he knew the Torah. But when he will come back, first of all, let's get into it quickly. Where will he come back? What time will he come back? In which era would he come back? What is the purpose of his return? When will he die? Number one, it will be the time of Imam Mahdi. Subhanallah. Number two, Imam Mahdi will come and Dajjal will already appear. The fitna of a Dajjal, my respected brothers and sisters, no human being. The fitna of a Dajjal, I don't have time to get into Dajjal, I have mere five, five or ten minutes more. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ma min Nabi, there is no prophet except that he told his companions, he told his followers about the fitna of the Masih Dajjal, about the trials of the Masih Dajjal. Inevitably, inevitably, I am the last messenger, so Dajjal will come amongst you. And Dajjal will come after I die because in my lifetime he didn't come. So beware of a Dajjal. How can you be safe from a Dajjal? The Prophet said, read the opening verses of Surah Al Kaf. That is why we recite this Surah Al Kaf every Friday. And there is no human being except one man. The Prophet said, Dajjal will come. And what he will do? He will take a human being and he will split him in half and cause him to die. Before he split him, he says, do you believe in me? He will come to be a Nabi. And after he got the people to believe in him, he will claim prophethood. And after that, he will claim that he is God. He will have heaven in his left hand and hell in his right hand. Or vice versa. He will have fire and he will have water. Which is fire is heaven and which is water is hell. And if he tells, if he tells you to one, jump into the hell because his hell is Jannah. And he is the Antichrist. He will come in such a time, my respected brothers and sisters, his fitness will be, too, will be too overbearing. And he will corner the Imam Mahdi and the Muslims of the time in towards a valley and in towards a place where they, uh, in towards a fort as we may say. Subhanallah. He, uh, the Masih Dajjal will come and he will point towards the sky and it will rain. He will turn towards the sky and it will be drought. He would, point to, he would point towards the fields and animals will flourish and plants would grow and vegetation will, be, will, will grow. He will point towards another land and it will be barren and all the animals will fall and they will die. Can we be able to? Now I ask myself this question after I heard it once. If we cannot be able now to restrain ourselves from the temptations of the dunya, things like interest, Things like falling into a, the trap of a beautiful woman. Things like robbing people. Small things, things like backbiting. How can we be able to keep ourselves, my respected brothers and sisters, how can we be able, be able to keep our Iman at a time when someone will come and point towards the skies and the skies will rain. Point towards the skies and it will be drawn. Point towards an individual and bring him back to life. Slit an individual in half and bring him back to life. Point towards a place and animals will die. Point towards another place and animals will flourish. Heaven in one hand, hell in, hell in the other hand. How can we be able to have Iman then when we don't have Iman now? How can we be able to resist such a fitna? That is why the Prophet said there is no greater fitna 
on an any ummah. There is no greater fitna like the fitna of the Masih al Dajjal. And I give you the remedy, like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, recite the opening verses of Surah Al-Kaf. So at the time when Jesus wasallam will come, the Dajjal and his army will corner Imam Mahdi and the followers of Imam Mahdi. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, when Imam Mahdi comes, go towards him even if you have to crawl onto ice. Go towards him if you, even, if you have, even if you have to crawl upon ice. So. Dajjal will corner the Muslims and Imam Mahdi in towards this valley and in towards this, this fortress as we may see. And it is about Fajr time. And they know that tomorrow they will have to face Dajjal and the greatest battle. You know, the, 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 the Christian, they call it Armageddon. Let's not venture into that. The greatest battle on the face of this dunya. Muslims of the time against the greatest enemy of the time. And it is about Fajr time. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, In Asham, in Jerusalem, on the white minaret, Jesus Christ will descend on Fajr, at Fajr time for everyone to see on the angels of two wings. And he will come upon the minaret from the skies. And he will come down from there on a ladder. And he will make his way towards the Muslims at Fajr time. The Azan will be called. And the Iqama will be called. And lo and behold, they was lo and behold, the Muslims will stand up and they will start to form the safs for Fajr Salah. And Imam Mahdi is about to lead them. And lo and behold, Isa, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, will make his way towards the saf. And when the Imam, Imam Mahdi turns around and he will recognize Isa because of his striking beauty. His striking beauty. And we are told about Isa. And Imam Mahdi will recognize Isa. He will try to recede from the first from the from the Imam's position to give Isa والسلام, the Imam. To be the Imam of the Salat of Fajr. But Isa والسلام, will say, No, the Iqama was called for you. And that is the greatest privilege that a prophet is going to come back. Prophet is the seal of all prophets. Don't get this wrong, eh? But he will come back and he will pray behind who? Behind Imam Mahdi, a follower of Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the salah will be led by Imam Mahdi and the leadership of the army will be, you know, will be put over, hand over to Jesus Christ. And he will hold his sword and he will turn around and he will break the gates. And Dajjal will be there. And the sinners will be there, and his companions will be there. And they will rush to the Muslims, and they will try to fight the Muslims. And anywhere Isa alayhi salatu wasalam look and he points his sword, they will be destroyed. And anywhere he look and his voice goes, and his beloved Noor goes, subhanAllah. And he will strike and everything will be destroyed. And he will proceed towards the Dajjal, and that is the purpose of his return, to slay the Dajjal. And he will proceed towards the Dajjal, and he will slay the Dajjal. And he will point his sword towards the skies and let the blood of the Dajjal run. And he will tell the people, look at your so-called Lord. He claimed that he is prophet and then he claimed that he is Lord. Look at the blood of your Lord because Allah is above this dunya. And this is not God and I slay your so-called God. And then from then on will be pure Muslims. And people will gather and they will follow Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, and that will be the best of times. And my respected brothers and sisters, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, will eventually die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu nafsin maut. Every soul will taste death. You, me, Muhammad and Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, will die. Finally, on the day of judgment, doomsday. There will be a conversation between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is for everybody to witness. Remember I said what is his message? Inna Allah rabbi wa rabbukum fa'buduhu hadha siratum mustaqeem. Allah is my Lord and Allah is your Lord. So worship him and this is the straight path. We do not need no one to go truthful. You do not need the Imam. 
Neither you do not need the priest. You do not need the pastor. Neither you do not need the pundit. You do not confess your sins to no one, but you confess your sins towards Allah. We bow our heads towards who? Who do we worship? Many people think that we worship this square piece of thing that you see here. Or many people think that we worship the black, the black box in Mecca, which is Al Kaaba, and all gratitude and all, and all reverence towards the Kaaba. It is our direction of worship. But we don't worship the Kaaba. We worship Allah. Who do we worship? The one who made us. So Allah on the day of judgment will ask Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, and this is what? And we will conclude by this. This is the conversation that took place, that will take place between Adam, between Allah, and between Jesus Christ on the day of judgment. And it's mentioned in Surah Maryam. And it's mentioned in Quran. A'udhu billahi min shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa iz qala Allahu ya Isa ibn Maryam, a'anta qulta linnas ittakhuduni wa ummiya ilahayn min dunillah. Allah will say, "O oh Jesus, the son of Mary, a'anta qulta linnas." Did you tell people to take me, to take Jesus and my mother as two gods beside Allah? Oh Jesus Christ, did you tell people, Anta Kultalin Nas? Did you tell people, Ittakhaduni, take me, Jesus Christ, Wa Ummiya, and my mother, Ila Haini min Dunilla, as two gods beside Allah? What Isa will say? What Jesus will say on the day of judgment for everyone to listen to? Qala Subhanak. Qala subhanaka ma, ma yakunu li an akula ma laysa li bihaq Glory be to you, O Allah. How perfect and pure you are. Subhanak, glory be to you. Ma yakunu li an akula ma laysa li bihaq How can I say something which I have no right to say? How can I profess something that I, has no, that I have no right to say? In kuntu kultuhu faqad alimta If I had said it, verily you would have known. If I had said such a thing in this dunya, you would have known. You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would have known. Ta'lamu ma fi nafsi. You know what is inside of me. Wala a'lamu ma fi nafsik. But I don't know what is inside of you. Innaka anta allamul ghuyub. Verily, you are the knower of all things. And you are the knower of the unseen. So, my respected brothers and sisters, on the day of judgment, when all those who follow Jesus as God, which we don't, and all those who follow his mother as a God as well, which we don't, because we worship who? We have kids amongst us. I want everybody to recite this. I want everybody to recite this here and now. We worship the one who made us. We worship our maker. Who do we worship? We worship our maker. That's who we give deity to. That is who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Say Allah is one. We worship our maker. We pray towards our maker. That's who we pray to. So on the day, on the day of judgment, when everybody will be there who used to worship Jesus and who used to worship his mother and call them a part of Trinity and what else and what not. In Islam, we say what is haqq and we say what is true. That Jesus is not God nor his mother, but he is the word of Allah, blown into Maryam. Kun fayakun, be and behold it is. He was blown, the word, be and behold, miraculous, he was blown into Maryam. And she is from him. Uh, uh, and the word is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is behold, miracle. He is not the son of God, neither he is part of a trinity, but he is a man and he will die. And Muhammad is a man and he did die. And I will die and you will die. And on the day of judgment for everyone to be seen. On the day of judgment for every single one who will be there will see and they will witness. Allah will say, did you tell mankind to worship you and your mother? And Isa and Jesus will say, no. Subhana, glory be to you. How can I say such a thing? If I said that, then you would know. You know what is inside of me and I don't know what is inside of you. Innaka anta allamul ghuyub. Verily you are the all knower of every single thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, my respective brothers and sisters, with an understanding which is correct. I mean, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us, insha'Allah, that we learn the lives of the prophets, we learn the lives of the ambiyas, that when we listen to the talks of deen, 
and his lessons and his stories we get from the talks of Deen, it builds our Iman. We listen, we learn, we practice, and we propagate. And we re repeat, and we repeat, and we repeat. We listen, we learn the Deen, we put it into our lives, and we propagate. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Balligu anni wala aya. Speak of me, even if it's one verse. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, my respected brothers and sisters, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, I close with this verse, which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'abudu. Allah, verily Allah is my Lord and your Lord. Fa'abuduhu, worship Him. Hadha siratun mustaqim. This is the straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us, inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Again, my respected brothers and sisters. Again, I thank everybody for listening so attentively. Amin. And we thank the officials of this masjid to making all this happen by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope that we leave here tonight at least with something which we can put, which we can put in our lives. And I hope, inshallah, that Allah will give us istiqama. I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take riya out of our lives. I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take show and fame away from us and take away pride from us. That when we do something, we do something for the sincerity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only for His face and His face alone. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.